What the HE Double Hockey is going on YouTube? It's me, your boy, back at it again with another video. And today I'm gonna to be talking about live poultry markets in Los Angeles, why they are needed, and how they're at risk of closing by the city council, which needs to be resisted as much as possible. I'm also gonna take you with me to go buy a fresh chicken from one of these markets and show you a really awesome but easy recipe on how you could cook one of these chickens whole. But before that, I just wanna take a second and thank you for the awesome response to my last video. Y'all really enjoyed it, and I'm gonna to try to bring you a lot more content like that. So, live markets, let's talk about them. They're exactly what they sound like. There are markets where you could go and buy live poultry. Think chickens, ducks, quails, etc. AKA, the freshest chicken or other poultry that you could buy in Los Angeles. And it's certainly fresher than anything you could buy at Whole Foods, for example. And there's not that many of these markets. According to an article that I'll link in the description below, I think there's about two dozen of these stores that's for the entire city of Los Angeles that slaughter and sell poultry on premises. And it's important to know that these markets serve an immense purpose to their communities. You have lots of cultures who are used to cooking with fresh ingredients. And these stores are one of the few ways that these communities have the opportunity to eat fresh, the opportunity to eat organic, have the opportunity to eat good protein that's not pumped full of hormones, not pumped full of antibiotics, not pumped full of preservatives to survive shipment that just absolutely kills nutrition. It's fresh and it's all for a really good price. Like you can get a fresh organic large chicken here for about 13 bucks. And the closest thing that you get to this quality is gonna be at Whole Foods, which is gonna be a lot more expensive and it's still not gonna be as fresh as this. Not to mention that Whole Foods only serve wealthier communities, AKA not the communities that these are located in. And said communities would have to go way out of their way in order to purchase an equivalent bird. They're really important. Now, what if I told you that the city council wants to shut these markets down for really, in my view, no other purpose than xenophobia? Remember, these markets mainly serve immigrant communities. Now tell me why Councilmember Kortz, which serves the fifth district, said he doesn't know of any major foodborne illness outbreaks that began in LA Life markets, but wants to close them because, quote, there are some people that have become sick from eating some of the more exotic foods. I'll go ahead and wait and let you tell me what's so exotic about chicken. Another council member, Blumenfield of District 1 that serves Konoga Park, Tarzana, Woodland Hills, said, quote, the fact that this virus potentially started in a wet market in China caused us to look at ourselves in Los Angeles. And do we have these kinds of wet markets that are cruel and potentially dangerous? Cruel? Dangerous? Like, what? Let's break that down, shall we? How are these markets any different than huge slaughterhouses when it comes to cruelty? Do you think that the chicken that you find at the store comes from like a magic poultry tree? No, they're probably grown in worse conditions, mind you, and slaughtered in mass. There's nothing cruel about these markets that can't be said the same for huge slaughterhouses. In fact, I would think these individual markets are less cruel because there's individual attention paid to each chicken, right? You're not having a machine that can like miss and cut off a wing instead of the neck, you know? Like, and for the second point, dangerous? One, we don't even know if Corona started in a wet market in China. But even if it did, many scientists think it may have originated in like a bat or a pangolin. They're not selling bats or pangolins at these markets. They're selling chicken. Plus California has extremely strict health standards. Like you're not gonna get sick from buying a chicken at these markets. So I would say to the city council, drop the xenophobia, right? These markets serve an immense purpose and they need to stay. Rant over, I hope you decide that you wanna support these markets. But I understand if you're a little intimidated. You may have never gone to one of these markets or you only cook with, you know, individual parts of the birds. That's why I'm here. I'm gonna actually take you with me to go buy one of these birds. And then I'm gonna show you a really easy and awesome recipe that you could use to cook the whole chicken. So while there are several of these markets in LA, I wanna be taking you to LA Fresh Poultry. It's located on Virgil Avenue, nestled between historic Filipino town and little Bangladesh. You know, if this is a little out of your way, you could simply search live poultry near me and find a market on Google Maps. And as you can see, it's really simple inside. There's no frills, and at this market in particular, there isn't even a menu. Other markets sometimes do have like a list of the birds that you can get, but here you simply tell them what kind of bird you want, if it's a chicken, white or brown, and 
what kind of weight you want. For example, I simply said one chicken, brown, whole, three to five pounds. And then I waited about seven to 10 minutes while they got it ready. And then I was on my way. And let me emphasize the price for a second. I got this four and a quarter pound bird for $12.50. And it was literally killed that day. <laughs> like the chicken I received was still body temperature. You can't get fresher than that. What's the closest alternative for these communities? The closest thing I know of is going to Whole Foods where the equivalent sized bird for the equivalent freshness, even though it's still not as fresh, is gonna run you four bucks a pound. That's gonna be like 1645. That's like 25% more expensive and it's still not as fresh. So you could see one, how amazing these poultry shops are and two, why they're needed. Again, these communities don't have access to a lot of fresh ingredients. Like the nearest Whole Foods to this market in particular is like five miles away. By bus, that's 40 minutes each way over an hour and a half to just get some chicken that's not even as fresh. These markets are extremely important and we really need to tell the city council that these markets need to stay. This is actually my first time at this market in particular. So the owner handed me his business card, which I'll go ahead and put like an image below here. Um, if you're intimidated about going in person or you're short on time, just give them a call and you know, just give them the details of what you need. I'll even give you an example script. Go ahead and call them up and say, hey, I need a whole brown chicken for pickup. They'll say, okay, cool, what size? And you'll say, you know, about three to five pounds. And then they'll either ask you what time you wanna pick it up or say that it'll be ready in 15 minutes. You're done, head on over there, pick up your chicken and you're in and out. There's no need to wait in really huge, long grocery store lines. It's really easy. Now, I'm gonna show you how I cook this chicken. But before I do, please consider liking if you've liked this video so far and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps out the channel with the YouTube algorithm and I'll greatly appreciate it. But let's go ahead and get cooking. So this is the final product of what I'm gonna be showing you how to cook today. It's extremely tender, juicy, and tastes amazing. It's heavily seasoned and it's a lot different than your traditional lemon garlic chicken you see 20 recipes of online. It's loaded with flavors of cilantro, lime, chile, etc. So to start off, I'm actually gonna be cutting up some potatoes. I use Yukon Gold and soak them in water. We're gonna cook the bird on top of the potatoes. So when all the juices come down from cooking, the potatoes are gonna soak them right up and it's gonna be a good time. Cut them up into about inch, inch and a half size pieces, cover with water and put aside. So now it's time to prep the bird itself. But something to note is that if you go to these markets, they're usually still gonna have the head and neck attached so if you're squeamish, go ahead and skip to whatever the timestamp here is. So you can go ahead and avoid seeing me chop off the head. But I'm personally not grossed out because, well, I know that chickens don't grow at a magic poultry tree with their heads off. So I take a cleaver and about two to four chops, the head and neck comes off pretty clean. And make sure to try to get as closest to the body as possible. I then pat down the chicken with paper towels and I set it aside. Now we're going to make some compound butter. The idea is we're going to be putting the butter underneath the skin so it protects the meat from drying out. And any butter that doesn't soak into meat will go straight to the potatoes. I've got about a stick and a half of lightly colder than room temperature butter here for you know a four and a quarter pound bird. As for my seasonings, I have garlic powder, smoked paprika, kosher salt, and for some spice, I personally use this sustainable Brazilian dried pepper, which supports the Baniwa tribe in the Amazon. But you can use any pepper if you like. You know, lots of people have cayenne, so honestly, you could just use whatever you like for spice. I have regular black pepper, Chef Manito chicken flavor. And I also have three cloves of fresh garlic, some cilantro, and one lime that I'm going to juice. Now, if this is getting complicated, I'll put all these ingredients in the description below so you don't miss anything. Now you take these seasonings and add them to the butter. And honestly, I don't use measurements. I'm Latino, I do everything by eye. But be generous. Do what feels right for you, but don't go overload on things that have salt in it. As you can see here, I use a good amount of paprika and garlic powder. You know, and then after adding the seasoning, I add the fresh garlic, juice of one lime, cilantro, and then get to mixing it with my hands. Like you really wanna get in there and combine it. And once you're done, set aside in the fridge and wash your hands really well. Now we season the chicken itself. I like flavor, so I make sure to season all sides of the bird. I only use a subset of my seasonings for the outside, but you could add everything again if you'd like. I'm going to season the underside of the bird with garlic powder, paprika, chef marito, and salt. And I'm also going to season the cavity as well. 
Speaking of cavity, we're going to stuff it with a couple of limes, which I make sure to scrape the cutting board with to not waste any of the seasonings. And then I go ahead and add some onions and cilantro inside as well. Once stuffed, get the butter out of the fridge. Now, while this is the most difficult part of the entire process, it's really not that hard. You're going to slightly separate the skin from the meat. You basically lift the skin a little bit and then push your hand through. Gordon Ramsay has a tutorial on how to do this with a turkey, but it's the exact same process with the chicken. Once you separate the skin a little bit, stuff it with the compound butter. Now you're going to really want to cover as much of the breast meat as possible because the butter is going to act as a protective layer to prevent it from drying out. And it'll also soak into the meat, giving it tons of great flavor. And any of the butter that doesn't soak into the meat will again drip down onto the potatoes. So either way, it's not gonna go to waste. I had a good amount of butter, so I actually also spread some onto the leg meat as well. Now the next step is optional, but I like to truss up the legs so the meat is closer together and it cooks a little bit more evenly. But again, it's optional, don't worry about it. After this, we season the breast side and the rest of the chicken. Again, don't be shy with the seasonings. This is over four pounds of meat. Go ahead and rub that seasoning in and make sure you get every inch of the chicken. Once done, set the chicken aside because we're going to prep the Dutch oven. Now, don't be alarmed if you don't have a Dutch oven. You could do this just fine with a baking sheet or baking pan. What you're gonna be doing either way is heat up a little bit of oil, maybe about one to two tablespoons worth, and add one coarsely chopped onion. Heat that on medium heat until the onions become translucent. And then once that happens, add your potatoes along with three to four cloves of fresh garlic. Now it's optional, but I also like to add more seasoning to the potatoes. You know, a little bit of salt, pepper, and paprika in my case. Then you're going to stir it together, and now you're gonna add the chicken. Now if you had a baking or roasting pan, transfer the onions and potatoes to the pan and place the bird on top of those there, and then cover the entire thing with two to three layers of foil. If you have a Dutch oven like me, put the lid on and set into a preheated oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now a good rule of thumb when cooking chicken is to cook it about 11 to 12 minutes per pound. I cooked my bird for 45 minutes, but if you have a roasting pan, cook it for 13 minutes a pound, since the heat is gonna be less contained. Either way, this time can fluctuate depending on your oven. So what you really wanna look for is if the meat reaches an internal temperature of 165 degrees in the breast area. Once it hits that temperature, we're going to turn on the broiler in our oven and place the chicken back inside for about five more minutes with the lid off to crisp out the skin. If you're using a baking pan, you're gonna take the foil off and do the exact same thing. Five minutes later and our chicken is done. And just look at how amazing this looks. Fresh, locally sourced chicken that was prepared that day that could feed your entire family for under 15 bucks? What's not to like? Well, I could actually answer that question. You can't eat it just yet. You're gonna to wanna to let it rest for about 20 to 30 minutes at least. And make sure you do so with the lid off. It's a similar concept to steak. You don't cut into a steak immediately after it's done cooking. If you do, you're going to lose all of those juices and it's just going to end up dry and then all your hard work was for nothing. But if you wait, the chicken will still be hot and extremely juicy. Here you actually see the leg meat practically falls off the bone and is super tender. But we all know that the real test is the breast meat, the part of the chicken that's super easy to overcook and is usually just bland but look and see for yourselves at how amazingly juicy it is here. You know, it was still pretty hot to the touch, so I had to grab a fork, but just look and see how big of an impact that compound butter had. I can squeeze the breast meat and juices will just leak out. Tons of flavor of lime, cilantro, chile. It's just super tasty. Now plating up, I got some of these amazing potatoes that were soaked with all that butter and chicken juices, some rice, I also made some guacamole, beans, and had some tortillas for an amazing meal. You know, one of my favorite ways to eat it is actually just grab a tortilla and make a mini burrito essentially. Get some beans, chicken, guac, and you have yourself a dinner to remember. And that's it for today's video, y'all. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I really hope you see why these live poultry markets are so important to some of us living in Los Angeles. They provide a great service to the community in offering extremely fresh poultry, extremely fresh protein at a really affordable price. And we really need to contact our city council members and let them know that they can take these markets away from us. 
They're really important. They need to stay. I really hope you consider supporting these markets and I'll put the information of the market I visited below so you can go check it out yourself. And again, if you've liked this video, please consider hitting the like button or subscribing if you haven't already. My name is David and I'll see you in the next one. You wanna see the head? No, thank you. Okay.